So good afternoon, everyone. It's so great to see you all again. Um, my name is Holly Wheeler, and on behalf of the Center for International Education and Career Development, I would like to welcome you to this session on careers abroad. Um, so today we're going to be covering different uh, industries and areas for your international career. <clears throat> so please do put questions in the chat as we go through the presentation. But before we start, I'd just like to address some of our housekeeping items. So um, again, we all know we're on Zoom. So as an attendee, um, please keep your microphone muted throughout the session. Um, feel free to turn your camera off or on as needed. We would love to see you, but I understand you know, if you wanna have your video off a little bit. Um, please put your questions and comments in the chat box and uh, we'll monitor that and answer those as we go. And um, okay, let's go ahead and get started. So you've already met me, I'm Holly Wheeler and I am a study abroad advisor at NAU. I advise for Asia and I send all students at NAU abroad, including international students. And hello, my name is Janelle Iris Sieber. I am with Career Development. So I'm one of our program coordinators or career counselors. And I'm the liaison for the Center for International Education and Holly is one of my favorite people. So we're excited to present this to you today and we'll go ahead and get started. So careers abroad, going abroad again after graduation. So kind of a breakdown of our agenda. Today, we're gonna to be covering different international career fields, kind of giving you an overview of your opportunities. We'll also be covering careers abroad for recent graduates, as well as careers abroad for experienced professionals, how to prepare for a future career abroad, and then last but not least, resources available to help you start your journey. So kind of a breakdown. So there are a number of different international career fields. So we live in a globalized world. Um, careers are across the board, different industries, different disciplines, they intersect and they're a part of something that's bigger than just themselves or just their country or their state in the US. So different fields that we're gonna cover today include international development, business, human rights and social justice, security and education. However, there are a number of more fields. So don't think that you're just limited to these. We're just giving you an idea. We're gonna be talking at, to you a lot today, but we're also gonna have a lot of great um, videos with organizations that we want to promote and get out there for you. So the first field that I wanna to introduce to you is international development. This is probably one of the most well-known fields in international education or international careers. And this um, field really focuses on improving the quality of life for people around the world, um, particularly for people in developing countries, but it can also be in developed countries for specific populations of people. So we're gonna start out with um, a video from the US um, AID, which is the International Development Agency of the United States. And this will give you um, a visual of what international development work looks like. Our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all cherish our children's futures and we are all mortal. Today, we seek to move beyond the accomplishments of the past to establish the principle that all the people are entitled to a decent way of life. Let us not forget that each child saved, each refugee housed, each disease prevented, each barrier to justice brought down, each sword turned into a plowshare brings us closer to peace, closer to freedom, closer to dignity. America is a nation with a mission. And that mission comes from our most basic beliefs. Our aim is a democratic peace. A peace founded upon the dignity and rights of every man and woman. We also know that progress 
in the most impoverished parts of our world enriches us all. So the United States will join with our allies to eradicate such extreme poverty in the next two decades by connecting more people to the global economy, by empowering women, by giving our young and brightest minds new opportunities to serve, and helping communities to feed, empower, and educate themselves. By saving the world's children from preventable deaths, That's how we'll confront the challenges of our time. This is how we will seize the promise of this moment in history. Who are we to believe that today's challenges cannot be overcome? And we've seen what changes the human spirit can bring. That is why we look to the future not with fear, but with hope. So I hope that you feel inspired after seeing this video and know that it's not just the United States that's doing this work and it's not just governments either, although those are two huge, um, you know, government and as well as nonprofits are two huge big organizations that do this kind of work. Um, you probably heard of the United Nations. They have an entire um, agency as part of the United Nations that works on um, development work. Um, there's UNICEF, which is actually part of the United Nations, these, all these nonprofits, the Peace Corps. Um, there's also things called think tanks or for-profit companies such as the Brookings Institute or Comonix. And um, basically when we're addressing such a huge global um, challenge, it takes many, many different players from government to nonprofit NGO work to private companies to help you know, fill in all of these gaps and all of these roles that we all play. So governments are kind of at the top and they will do a lot of organization, um, large scale organization to help make big changes. And then they hire NGOs or they hire companies to help actually implement the projects. So these projects can be anything from looking at food security to looking at technology to looking at social and human rights. So no matter what your major is, you probably do have a role in, in international development as, many, as well as many of the international fields we'll talk about today. So I'm gonna show you another video, um, which kind of gives you a good idea of how the private um, sector is helping to um, work on international development goals. And so this is the featured organization collaboration with IBM and Chemonix. Bon, je disais l'enfant va très bien. Je rêve de porter mon enfant entre mes bras et le garder. Je veux la santé pour l'enfant pour qu'il devienne grand temps. Can you talk a little bit about how this platform that Comonix and IBM created together is helping local patients get the medicine they need? So Admis is a procurement electronic platform. It's a one-stop shop that has everything of the supply chain procurement process captured in. That enables complete end-to-end -end visibility of the entire procurement process for life-saving medicines. Everybody within the chain is alerted once it's their time to take over to ensure that the products definitely arrive. Admis tracks the medicines all the way from the manufacturers right up to the regional warehouse where we're standing right now. And from here, we organize the deliveries to the health facilities where they're dispensed to the patients. Sometimes you have very bad roads. When the rain sometimes is flooded, 
So what happens if a ferry gets broken down? If the ferry is broken down, we have to count on the goodwill of the villagers because sometimes they come to the health facilities themselves. So they carry these medicines from the vehicle or bike and then take the medicines across in the canoes. Fortunately, with the support of the admin's tracking system, we are able to get the medicines to the right people at the right place at the right time to save lives. Can you tell me maybe a little bit about how the medicines are saving lives every day in the clinic? Here, our population are really fighters. They work hard. The medicine gives them strength to fight for their life or for the life of their children. There is no day in hospital like this one without a patient. So we need to ensure that those medicines are continuously available to save lives and bring hope to the population. All right, next up is international business. So think about economy, think about money. Um, but mainly businesses and kind of getting them out there into a globalized society. So first up, we're going to have a video from Unilever. They're definitely focused on sustainable businesses and how those can then drive better performances. Um, but we're going to watch this and we'll keep moving forward. Job titles. They're not a big deal these days. Not to us anyway. Because we know that you're much more than just a few words. You've got spark, ambition, drive, passion. You want to feel proud of what you do and make others proud of you too. You want to make a difference in the world and have real impact. Whether you're a human spark igniter or a green planet saver or developing your career as a disruptive digital leader, you know what you care about. And you put it first, because what matters most is what you do. We put labels on our products, not our people. So bring change, make an impact, and be inspired to be your best self. To us, you are more than your job title. So again, lots of great videos. Unilever also does studies. So they do research trying to find the links between international business and poverty reduction as well. So bringing that economy really back into the local governments and economy as well. So main things for international business, think about those international trades. So export, import, um, basically international business is a cross border transaction. So whether that's between individuals, businesses or government entities, it's across the board. Um, the transaction can kind of be anything. So anything that has value, whether that's goods, services, technology, knowledge, capital. So import exports, licensing, franchising. We've all seen McDonald's, whether you are in uh, Dubai or in Chicago, Illinois, it's across the world. Um, but also multinational corporations. You've seen these government, multi-governmental organizations. So something that is familiar in kind of any of the international career fields is that a lot of the times governments are a part of it, but there's also those non-governmental organizations and those multinational corporations that are just looking to expand and bring back business and economy to different areas of the world. Next up, we're going to have a video from Coca-Cola. So probably everyone has seen this, if not had Coca-Cola, but this is one of my favorite videos. It's very heartwarming. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. Mm. 
Chris, Chris. Yeah, me to help. Lost together. We discovered ourselves again. And we realize that the things that matter deserve time. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. So, I don't know about you guys. Holly even mentioned it. The amount of food and the amount of love that is in that video just warms me up because food is my love language. Um, but something you probably didn't know about Coca-Cola is that they started their global network in the 1920s. And now they're in more than 200 countries and they have nearly 450 brands. So they've definitely pushed out from their humble beginnings. I think they started in Atlanta, Georgia, if I'm not incorrect. Next up, we're going to look at Conservation International and Starbucks and their partnership. Our biggest threat as humans is thinking that we and the planet are invincible. That kind of denial has put our world at risk. But we humans also have the power to learn and to make a difference. Conservation International believes that people need nature, that it's our responsibility to protect it. For 15 years, Conservation International has been on an amazing journey with Starbucks to ethically source their coffee around the world. Together, they've created a new way to buy that coffee, one that is sustainable, transparent, and good for people and the planet. This journey has covered four continents where they've improved the lives of one million farmers and workers and cared for millions more coffee trees. Conservation International is proud to recognize Starbucks for ethically sourcing 99% of their coffee, making them the largest coffee retailer to reach this milestone. But there's always more to do. Starbucks is committed to 100% ethically sourced coffee. It is that constant pursuit of this last 1% that helps make the world a better place. That's why Starbucks is working with groups like Eastern Congo Initiative, which is helping thousands of coffee farmers in the Democratic Republic of Congo to increase their production, creating opportunities for local communities. In the end, this isn't about coffee. It's about possibilities and commitment. Whether you're a global company like Starbucks or a single human being, you can make a difference. And all those differences add up to a world that's changed for the better. Again, a huge thing, you'll probably see that we have a lot of Starbucks on campus. Um, but the fact that they are one of the largest coffee retailers to reach that 99% um, mark that milestone of having their coffee be ethically resourced is huge, but also the biggest thing that they're focusing on is being sustainable, transparent, and then also being good for not only the people that are working for them, but also the planet. Yeah, that's a great example of, you know, these public and private organizations working together, private public partnerships. Um, so keep that in mind as, you know, you're thinking about all the ways that your major intersects with so many different fields. Um, you know, it just takes um, some innovation and some creativity to figure out how we can make the world a better place, but also, you know, grow our businesses and, and grow our communities. So this is actually a great segue into international human rights and social justice. Um, which is fighting for a more just and equal world. And that's what Starbucks is trying to do by making sure that their sourcing was ethical. Um, so this um, is a, it's a pretty heavy field as in it's a, it's a challenging field to work in because 
you are dealing with you know people that are facing immense challenges um, such as being refugees or being exploited or or these kinds of things but it's really rewarding work um, so this next video is from an ngo called save the children and they work with um, refugee population, specifically children. Um, and I will note that this um, is a bit of a, a sensitive video. So if you're uncomfortable, feel free to, you know, turn off your sound and, and come back in, let's see how long it is. I think it's only uh, one, one, one or two minutes, so. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish. Granny. <laughs> Hello. Have you done your homework? Adam. General Strike. Ready or not? Here he comes. Violent clashes with Brit. Five ammunition against. Deserve to get shot. Hello, Hello. 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 strikes on rebel position. We are going to stay. Tally. Go. <laughs> So pretty powerful example of, you know, just because you are not experiencing things in your own country, there are, there are horrible things happening around the world, but there are things that you can do to help um, improve, you know, these situations for people around the world. And there is even, you know, all of these potential job career paths that you can also pursue. Um, like we've been mentioning throughout this presentation, um, all of these career fields are really interdisciplinary and intersect in many different ways. Um, and this one in particular is really linked to international development and public policy. So of course there are the international law bodies like the international court, um, but there's also NGOs and think tanks like the Carter Center and the Human Rights Watch. You can also um, work for an NGO on immigration and refugee issues, crisis response such as Doctors Without Borders, environmental protection like Greenpeace, and conflict resolution which is you know helping us find non-violent, non-war solutions to our you know conflicts and challenges. So Again, a very um, challenging field to work in, but also probably you know one of the most rewarding fields you can work in. And I wanna show you this video. Um, before I play the video, I want you to know that we actually have a chapter of Amnesty International here at NAU campus. And if these things really move you and make you wanna change the world, please check out our chapter. Um, I've had other students be involved in the chapter and they've had a really positive experience and it's a great resume builder. And it shows that you, know, you are aware of what's happening in the world and you wanna make a difference. Um, something that I also hear my students say a lot is, oh, I hear about all these NGOs and the nonprofits and they, you know, they want me to donate money and I don't have any money because <laughs> I'm a student. Well, you don't have to donate money. You can donate your time. And this is a great example of how you can do that. Do you watch videos on social media, worry about the state of the world, but feel like there's not much you can do? Are you fed up with politics of left versus right, of us versus them? Do you think there's too much talk of the economy when it's people and the planet that really matter? Do you believe we have a shared humanity and a shared responsibility for what goes on in the world, despite what politicians tell us? If you do, then you are one of us. Amnesty International is a global movement made up of more than 10 million supporters. And here's one of them. This is Kanza. She learned about Amnesty on social media and started signing and sharing our petitions online. She now volunteers as a youth leader in Pakistan and she's a passionate advocate for women's rights, helping to inspire more young people to become campaigners and activists. This is Donatella. She's a crisis investigator, so she regularly turns up in war zones to dig up evidence of attacks on civilians. Here she is on a research mission, cataloguing the witness testimonies that we use to publish accurate and reliable reports on human rights abuses. 
John is a fundraiser in London. The money that he raises helps Amnesty to stay independent, which means our reports are taken seriously at all levels, from media platforms to global institutions like the UN. Matt uses online resources and data analysis to verify evidence of human rights abuses from his college campus. With people like him, Donatella and the countless other researchers and analysts, we're able to tell the world the truth about human rights abuses and put pressure on governments to keep their promises and respect international law. And this is Kevin. He's part of a network of computer specialists who keep our systems secure. And he's the guy you call when the website goes down. This is Serge. He organises an annual letter writing event in the DRC, along with this letter writing event in South Korea, this one in the Netherlands, and all the others that take place across the world. They contribute to a global campaign to support all these people who've had their human rights denied. This is Andy. He's the video producer that made this video. And this is you. You're the one watching this video and worrying about the state of the world. But this time, there is something you can do. Donate what you won't miss. Campaign for something you believe in. Share this video. Join the movement. Honestly, I just love that video because I think something that's huge is like, if you don't have the resources to donate, you can donate your time, your energy, your social media platform to share um, their platform even more and to whoever your friend group is or who your own network, which is great. Next up, we have international security intelligence. So essentially protecting the things that matter to us. The first video we're gonna see is from General Dynamics. So they are an aerospace and defense company ranging from jets and combat vehicles to nuclear powered submarines and communication systems. General Dynamics ensures that today is safe and secure and tomorrow smarter one incredible execution at a time. Innovators, thinkers, dreamers, Understand that action accelerates progress, wherever your mission takes you. Behind the screens, behind the scenes, on the ground, in the air, under the sea, in the lab, to the cloud, and everywhere in between. Powering tomorrow's mission again and again. We have no plans to slow down. We're General Dynamics. Innovation spanning everywhere. All right, so when we think about international security, think of terrorism, counterterrorism. Um, ethics, national security, and geopolitics. So different fields, it's kind of focusing on making sure that we have a more stable and peaceful world. Um, biggest things, federal defense, intelligence. So you think of FBI, CIA in the US, um, but that's in, again, counterterrorism is a huge thing, especially since a number of events that have happened throughout the US history and international history. Technology. This is a huge thing. Um, cybersecurity has increased within the last 20 years. I think, what is it, the last 50 years ago, maybe the internet was created. If then, I knew my parents didn't grow up with it. I was starting to get into it as a child doing jumpstart math programs, but that's something that's become huge. Think about how many technolog technological advances have been pushed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. You guys are taking classes currently on virtually. So we have the NEU Flex instead of being in person. Zoom, we're doing this entire international career week on Zoom. However, all these technological platforms or companies need to have a level of security because there's a chance for hacking and other things. Nuclear, deeper, I can never say this word, de 
proliferation. Um, so I think this thing, this has happened within the last 30 years where nuclear scientists have really advanced. Um, however, having that at someone's access and being able to destroy entire countries is kind of terrifying. So there's a global push to deproliferate nuclear sciences in general. And then also looking at foreign policy with other nations. So anti-corruption, climate accords, which we are now a part of again. Yay, exciting day. Um, conflict and war resolution and whatnot. So now we're going to watch a video about CIE, the CIA, not CIE. Um, yeah, I'll, we'll close off with that after. Yeah. It only takes <laughs> one new piece of foreign intelligence and everything can change in an instant. Hey, I think I found something. Most people will never see your work. Only three people in the world have access to the information we need. Notify the field. Your greatest strength will be the people around you. And you're gonna be able to see the whole thing? Yep, gonna be in the roof right here. Best seat in the house. And your greatest reward is knowing your efforts will help keep every American safe. Your achievements, while unknown to the public, are critical to our national security. This translation is technically accurate, but in this context, it really means this. The nation. We got it. Is counting on you to discover the truth. I'll call the White House. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the CIA. You can play a role protecting our nation. Start a career at the CIA and do more for your country than you ever dreamed possible. So the CIA is an incredible experience. The reason I was giggling a little bit is because it's a very dramatic video. It reminds me of like one of those BOD movies or like Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So it's not you're probably not gonna have that much mood lighting or that kind of setup per se, but the work that they're doing there is things that are true. Um, so it's a big thing. FBI, for an example, is more domestic security. The CIA is not really a law enforcement function area. However, it's primarily focused on overseas intelligence gathering. So they're tasked with gathering, processing, and anal analyzing national security information across the world. So it's a huge field. They recruit people from literally every walk of life, every country, because it's an international effort. Yeah, please, you know, this is definitely an, a U.S. organization, but, um, and you, you won't have, you know, the the movie background, but you'll probably be more in like an office setting and you know your country likely has its own organization called by something else but all this international intelligence work is um, international in the sense that we share um, intelligence with with our partner with our allies so if this interests you, um, you know explore what the requirements are, um, if you want to serve your your country. Okay, and so the last field that we're gonna look at today is international education. And this is really just about helping us understand, appreciate and collaborate together um, across all of our, our, our world's um, cultural diversity. So here is a short video. Um, it, this is from an NGO that works in international education. And this will just give you an idea of what this field is all about. The world is reshaping every day. In the face of rapid and sweeping change, Education is a powerful tool. International education opens minds. It enables people to connect. It brings people together to deepen understanding and solve complex problems. IIE deploys the power of international education to help students grasp the global forces driving change. Because today's students will shape the future, from government and business to the arts and technology. We are privileged to administer the Fulbright, Gilman, and Humphrey International Fellowship Programs on behalf of the U.S. Department of State and its Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs to promote peace and mutual understanding between cultures. We work in language training to develop the next generation of leaders. We give women and girls around the world access to education, transforming their lives and that of their communities. In countries facing humanitarian crises, we help students, scholars, and artists who are in danger, preserving lives, voices, and ideas, and safeguarding the expertise that will be needed to rebuild their homelands. IIE is the world leader in international education. We advance scholarship, 
build economies, and promote access to opportunity for all people in order to create a more peaceful and equitable world. We are IIE. Join us in building a brighter future. So international education is the field that, you know, I work in and it's actually what made, you know, you coming to NAU possible, which is so exciting because we really value your, um, your background and what you bring to our campus. Um, so these are looking at careers in teaching, exchange programs, capacity building, tourism, and they cross over almost all job sectors because you're all studying for, you know, different um, fields and areas. So you might work for an educational institution, um, either a high school or university, you could work in a language school, you could also teach um, English abroad if you're a native English speaker or um, a non-native speaker as well, or you might even be teaching your, your first language to um, in other places that need it. Um, there are lots of government sponsored programs and um, a lot of these programs actually have local offices that employ the local population. For example, when I was doing my Fulbright in New Delhi, we had a Fulbright campus uh, building where there were Americans working in that um, facility, but like most of the staff were native Indians who were helping, um, helping the program run and helping welcome scholars from the US to India. And in return, you know, when, when our scholars come here, we do the same thing. We help um, all of our visiting scholars and students. Um, there are also nonprofits who the government um, will work with to kind of facilitate these projects. It's very similar to international development where the government has these big um, overarching plans and then they hire out companies to help implement the projects. And then there are even private sector um, organizations which are kind of along the lines of tourism, um, but also they, they go a little bit beyond. So it's not just a vacation, right? You're gonna go on this internship abroad or you're going to um, go on a cultural tour that um, takes you to different experiences. So I'm gonna highlight one more final program, which is the Fulbright program. So this particular video is for US citizens, but I do wanna point out that there is a US um, foreign student program um, and it has different requirements, but this is something that you might be interested in um, or you know, looking at other different fellowships and programs as part of your international education experience. Fulbright is... Fulbright is... Adventurous an incredible experience, a really key part of American diplomacy. The true purpose of it is to create mutual understanding. It's rigorous. It's what you make of it. Fulbright is this incredible resource. You don't know how much you're capable of until you're put in certain situations. It gets you comfortable with the uncomfortable. It really changes your identity. It gives you a new perspective. I see it as a, a chance to have a big adventure. You embrace those hardships. You make it your own. Fulbright is an academic cultural exchange program. It's for Americans doing study, research, or teaching English for roughly an academic year. I did my Fulbright in a small Pacific Island country called Kiribati. And I went to London. To Malaysia. Belgium. Senegal. Jordan. Cambodia. India. Singapore. The Galapagos and Ecuador. When I went to Trinidad, my research focused on girls in juvenile detention center. Trying to fight hunger and malnutrition in Ethiopia. Studied high-speed aerodynamics at a small research laboratory outside of Brussels. Focusing on trivalent chromium and type 2 diabetes. Working with researchers to understand the impacts from plastic pollution. Taught fifth through eighth grade students conversational English. The whole point of my project is to create empathy and understanding and respect for Kiribati people. It's a life-changing experience. It's not just your grant year. Fulbright is lifetime. Fulbright is for everyone. So that means that Fulbright is also for you. All right, so recent graduates or when you are entering or finishing up your time here with us at NAU. What's realistic? Um, how much experience do you need to find a job abroad? At the end of the day, it kind of depends on your field, your skill sets, and your previous work experiences. So previous international experience can be critical on your resume. So having a section on your resume that says international experience um, is huge. So study, intern, volunteer abroad, travel, if you're interested, join the Peace Corps after graduation. Um, we just watched a video about Fulbright. 
that's a fantastic opportunity. Holly, do you want to touch base on that real quick? Because she's actually a Fulbright alumni. So the Fulbright program is an exchange program where um, American students go abroad, but also we bring foreign students here to the US for a graduate degree program. Um, so sometimes that can be a master's program, sometimes it's a PhD program. Um, so if that interests you, um, please meet with our International Student Scholar Services and they can tell you a little bit more about what that program is um, and you know, if you would be eligible and what kind of grants are available. Also options that you can do, teach English abroad, um, researching holiday working visas, that's an option also available potentially. Right now, especially within the age of the pandemic, travel might look a little different per different countries. Um, question, should I go to graduate school after? I think the biggest thing is thinking about why you are interested in graduate school. Um, is it to advance your career or is it because you don't know what to do next? If you don't know what to do next, come see your career services counselors at career development. We are here for you. Um, the biggest thing is trying to figure out what to do in your future is scary. Your major does not have to equal your career. You're gaining transferable skills in a number of different experiences. For the domestic students, taking part in workshops, presentations, your courses, for international experiences and international students, the fact that you're actually at NAU and engaging, and especially if English is your second language, that's a huge skill set that you can then push forward. But come meet with us. Um, Graduate school, I loved my graduate program. My undergrad felt like it was a quarter life crisis. I did something completely different for my graduate program and that's why I went to grad school. So it's a choose your own adventure, figuring out your journey, figuring out your story. Yeah, I agree, Janelle. Your grad school is a lot of work. So, you know, make sure that you love this field and do internships before, you know, when you're an undergraduate, do internships and make sure that this is the, the job that you want to work in. And then then you know that grad school, you know, you you know that this is the next step. It's not just because you're thinking, I think I might like that. I guess I'll just, you know, do two more years and see if I like it, right? You should always try to be doing internships before you go, and that'll help guide you on, on this journey. I'm going to skip that video and uh, sake for the sake of time, but here, yeah. go ahead. Janelle. Um, so how to prepare. So what should you be doing now? Again, study, intern, volunteer, travel abroad. NEU education abroad is an option. The Peace Corps prep program is specifically for domestic students that are looking to be, join the Peace Corps after they graduate. Studying another language. The U.S. is a little behind other countries when it comes down to that intercultural competence of learning different cultures instead of our own. And a big part of that is learning the language. Get involved with your community. We have a ton of organizations here at NAU and clubs. A lot of them are still meeting virtually. If you go to True Blue Connects NAU, you're going to find a number of opportunities to meet with potential classmates or meet with other students that are interested in the same hobbies or areas that you wanna go into for your future. Do some community service, volunteer outside, um, internships, volunteering. I don't think I can emphasize enough. You don't know if you like what you're gonna do until you start doing it. The worst thing you can do, not the worst thing, you're gonna gain experiences from it either way, but try to gain experiences in the field prior to committing to a contract or applying full-time, whether that's internships, doing some informational interviews, which is just reaching out to somebody and saying, hey, you're currently in a job that I can potentially see myself doing in the future. Can I ask you a few questions about your career journey? What did you do? If it's 15 minutes to an hour long, a lot of professionals in the field don't have linear career journeys. They didn't grow up and say, hey, I want to be a doctor, and then they're a doctor. Now, sometimes I feel like medicine is kind of more, but for an example, I wanted to be that doctor. I am obviously not a doctor. I'm in student affairs, and I love every moment of my job. Seeking out those cross-cultural and international experiences at home. So join clubs. We have international club on campus. We have an Amnesty International chapter, the I House, I Friends, Flag Friends. Um, but again, continue to explore your interests, develop those transferable skills, attend a few webinars, log into your LinkedIn learning. There's a ton of courses on there that you have access to as a student that a lot of you don't know about. 
do it. It's like the YouTube for professional development, essentially. Also, you have this great thing called Going Global. So if you literally look up Going Global in NAU, it's run through the Center for International Education. In this, you have a number of resources. The biggest thing that I love to point, like kind of look at, are those country career guides or they have um, city guides for in the US. With those, they have example resumes, financial considerations, top businesses or companies within those areas. Um, interview advice. So it's a wealth of knowledge that are, is at your finger, fingertips, essentially. It also has a number of internships and jobs posting, especially for people that are looking for those H-1 visas as well. So it's an opportunity to kind of look at it, get familiar with it. It's a great resource. And then last but not least, come see me. <laughs> Not just me, but our entire career development team. We have a lot of people. We're not in this field because we don't like it, obviously. I love working with students. I love when you guys are freaking out what you're going to do and we find out what you're passionate about or maybe some tangible steps or next steps that you can take to figure out who you want to become and maybe what are internship opportunities or who you can reach out to to learn about your desired career fields. If you're looking at your resume, if you're a sophomore year, make sure your resume is updated from your high school. Um, if you're an international student, attend our resume LinkedIn building workshop literally tomorrow to figure out how to transition your international resume from your home country to the American job market. It's a little different. We have one-on-one -on -one appointments essentially. If you go to nau.edu slash career, on the right-hand side, there's a schedule and appointment. Click on that. It walks you through that. If you have an issue, I'm going to put my email on here um, and you can just reach out to me and I'm happy to help. But yeah. Are there any questions um, from the group? We'll, we'll hang out for a little while if you have any questions. Um, but we do want to thank you so much for joining this session for International Career Week. Um, you can find all of our information sessions on our website. So here's the link in the chat one more time. And again, if you want more one on one guidance for your um, application materials for your future job visioning like what what you want to do, please use take advantage of all the resources available from career development. Um, and if you're interested, we do have another session coming up at four o'clock, which is international internships. So that would be going abroad. So doing an internship, not in the US, but in another country. It could be your home country. It could be another country um, and getting academic credit for that experience. And we will have three panelists joining us for that session. And it starts at four o'clock in um, about 40 minutes. So now we'll just open it up for questions. If you wanna hop off, um, this is the end of the session, but we will stick around for questions and have a great rest of your day.
Also, if you don't want to unmute and ask any questions, you're also welcome just to put it into our chat as well. And we can answer them verbally or through the chat as well. Okay, so it doesn't seem like there's any more questions. So we'll go ahead and close the session. Have a great day.